This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be talking about distributed system actions, or in other words, actions that are controlled within the units that exist in the system rather than in the overarching system itself. And so there's really two major things that are going to be happening on every tick in our game within our units, which is they're going to check their hunger level and then potentially try to eat something to satisfy that hunger level. So the first thing we need to do is for each of our units, we need to iterate through them and kind of tell each unit, hey, a tick is happening. You should check on these um, stats. So what we'll do is we'll start with our grass and we'll say in here, we'll say for each transform, I'm just going to call this U, short for unit, in grass holder. That's one of the convenient things about using the game objects to hold these is that we can just iterate quickly through them like this. We can say U dot get component unit, because we're just getting the transform, we need to get to the unit component on that transform dot, and then we'll call a method we haven't defined yet on the unit, but we could call it something like tick or on tick. And now we can actually do the exact same thing, so I'm going to simply copy and paste this for now for our rabbits and our wolves as well. We just need to make sure that we're changing our holders for each of these to the appropriate holders. Okay, so with that now we need to create this method so that it can actually be called on our unit. So let's jump over to our unit script and down below all these here, below the initialization methods, I'm going to create this um, on tick, double check, yeah, on tick method. So we'll say public void on tick. And then here again, we're doing two things. We're checking hunger level and then possibly eating. Now, these don't necessarily happen though, because for example, our grass is not a consumer and therefore it doesn't do any of this. So the first thing we can do is actually check, is this unit a consumer? So we'll say here, if profile.consumer, And then only if that is the case will we do anything in here, otherwise we'll just skip right by. So the first thing we can do is we can increase the hunger level. And we'll do that by saying current hunger, which is on this instance of a unit, plus equals profile dot hunger increase per tick. So if rabbits increase their hunger by five every tick, this is where we're doing that into the current hunger. Now here we can actually check, have we gotten so hungry that we starve? And so we'll do that by saying, if current hunger is greater than or equal to our profiles max hunger before death, if it's greater than that or if it's reached it, then this object is simply going to get destroyed. Let's say destroy game object, which is our quick and dirty way of you know, kind of showing death. Now the alternate is that we're not so hungry that we're dead, but we're hungry enough that we need we know we need to eat. This unit knows it needs to eat. So here we'll say else if current hunger is greater than or equal to the profile's eat threshold, then here is where we're going to handle our eating. The third option is that we're hungry, but not quite hungry enough that we need to eat, and certainly not hungry enough to die, in which case we're not going to do anything. In all of these cases, though, the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to update the um, appearance of our, or the name of our unit so that it reflects the new hunger that it has. Remember, we're using the name 
uh, the base name and then the sort of current hunger over its maximum possible hunger as its name. And so we can simply do that right here at the bottom by simply calling set name. And that will recall this method right here and simply update the current hunger for us in that name. Now, before we dive into the whole system of actually eating, which is actually going to entail kind of going back to the system a little bit, we're going to want to do one other thing, which is that when we do destroy this game object, we need to inform the system that, hey, this particular unit has died, and so therefore the current count of that unit needs to come down. So what we'll do is we're going to create a public on, or sorry, uh, private void on destroy method here, which we'll call automatically when this destroy is called. And what it will do is we're going to say forest, so call back to our system forest dot, and now we're going to call another new method we're going to create called on unit death. And we're simply going to pass it the profile. We're not going to pass it the entire instance that has been destroyed, but we're going to say that a grass was destroyed or a rabbit was destroyed. So now let's jump back to our forest and create this method. So go back to forest system. Down at the bottom of our code here, I'm going to write a public void on unit, oops, not on animator, on unit death. And we're going to take, that takes a unit profile parameter, we'll just call that profile. And then you know what's going to happen is we're simply going to check if it's grass, reduce the number of current grass. If it's a rabbit, reduce rabbits. If it's wolf, reduce wolf. Pretty straightforward. Um, again, there's a lot more kind of modular and um, efficient ways we can do this, but for right now, uh, we'll just simply do it using a switch statement. So we'll say switch. And what we're looking at is that profile we passed in. And then we have three possible cases right now. We have the case of grass. Oh, whoops. Sorry, we're not looking at the entire profile, we'll just look at the profile.name so that we can actually look at something that is um, a string. And so we can just check against that rather than having to check against the entire profile. So we'll say case grass. And if it's grass, then grass count will decrement by one. And we can break out of the switch there. If the case is rabbit, we will reduce our rabbit count by one. Break and case wolf wolf count decrements break and with switch statements you always need a default which in this case will simply won't do anything if somehow we got a profile that had a weird different name that didn't match um, I don't want to make like the wolf one just the default case because if for some reason a bug happens and something gets through with a weird profile name, I don't want to start decrementing something that actually exists because of a bug. Okay, so with that there, we can now see that our, um, our consumers, our rabbits and our wolves, are now going to start getting hungry and they should start, um, their uh, hunger will reflect that and they should start passing away. So let's jump back to Unity. And we shouldn't need to actually do anything in the inspector. Everything should just run as is. So let's hit play. And I'm going to pause this immediately so that we can see our kind of starting setup here. We've got the grass, we've got our rabbits. They've already got five hunger already. We've got our wolves that have five hunger as well. If I unpause this, we see that those start increasing. And like I say, right now, these aren't actually going to, um, there's no eating going on because we haven't implemented that logic. They're still able to multiply. They weren't so hungry they couldn't multiply. But then as we see these rabbits here get up to 100, we should see that they disappear. And when they do so, our rabbit count drops down to what it is there. So now we'll see here again at, in about a couple seconds, that will drop probably to zero. Yep, so zero rabbits left now. And now the wolves will... Um, eventually do the same thing as well. 
So right now, this is obviously just a purely negative feedback loop that's really, there's nothing that the uh, rabbits or wolves can do about their increasing hunger. So in our next video, we're going to actually give them sort of the ability to take action and um, solve this hunger problem that they're having. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.